In this example, we're going to sketch the graph of a function that has uh, certain characteristics here. So we're given us a couple of different x values to look at. Notice the input values are negative 1 for the first two pieces of information and 1 for the second two pieces of information. But then take a look at the functions that we're dealing with. We have both f and f prime. So we've got to keep track of what information each function gives us. So our f function is giving us information about points that are on the graph. And so we would have the point uh, input value negative 1, output value 2, given from the f of negative 1 equals 2. Likewise, the other piece of information that's uh, dealing with f is the f of 1 is equal to negative 2. So from that, we read out the point. Uh, input is 1, output is negative 2, and so that's a second ordered pair. So we could go ahead and plot those ordered pairs, actually. So let's do a negative 1, uh, positive 2 would land right in there. And then we've got the 1, negative 2, which would land right in here. So from those two pieces of information, we were able to get two ordered pairs. So now we've got two more pieces of information to figure out here. Um, and that comes from information about the derivative. So we have f prime of negative 1 is equal to 3. Well, the f prime function is our slope function. So what we get out of this is the slope um, at x equals negative 1 is 3. Okay, And then likewise down here, we have the slope. Slope, because we know we're looking at the f prime function, so that's our slope function. So it would be slope at x equals this time 1, because our input value there to our slope function is 1. Um, but that's actually going to have the same, um, the same value for the slope. So now we've got uh, lots of things that can happen here that could be correct. Uh, we do need to make sure that whatever we draw is in fact a function, but other than that, we have a lot of freedom as to what's going on. So uh, these two points we know are going to have slope three. Now slope three, we have kind of a rough estimate is, um, you know, positive there. That's about as good as you can get without looking at another point. But you know that each one of those uh, we're going to have to have positive. But we need to make sure that we don't, um, that we don't actually cross over each other when we're dealing with how to extend from these points because we need to make sure our graph is in fact a function. So I'm going to work here at the top point first. The easiest thing I can do is really make it a line there at that point. Certainly our function could be curved, but we could also just make the function a line at each one of these points, but just make sure those lines don't overlap in their domain. Just be parts of lines for each. So what I'm going to do here uh, is starting at the point uh, negative 1, 2, I'm going to go up 3 and over 1 to get a second point that could be on that graph. As soon as I have a second point that could be on that graph, I could have a, um, I could have a, a line. And I'm going to extend it there only to the left. Because what I want to do uh, to make sure that this is a function is to, um, to make sure that this other piece that's also a line, is actually going to be a parallel line, uh, doesn't overlap in the domain at all. So another way that we could um, represent 3 for the slope would be to go um, to the left 1 and down 3. And so if I were to go to the left 1 and down 3, it would give me uh, this point here. But I need to make sure that I don't have it filled in because I already filled in the point uh, 0, 5. So I can't fill in 0, negative 5 to go with it. But then that gives me that hole that I filled in there and the point that I started with gives me another um, another line that I can extend in the right direction. And so then that could be a function that has the four characteristics that are listed here. The two ordered pairs are on there and we made sure that the function itself 
was uh, had the right slope of the tangent line and I'm not really even dealing with tangent lines here because I just made it a piecewise linear thing and so not only it wasn't really a tangent line the function itself was just two different um, parts of lines where we paid attention to the domain. Certainly there are other ways that we could solve this problem, but uh, this to me is a, a clean way to where you really have an assessment of not just the fact that the, the function is positive there, but um, even a little bit more than that. But there are other ways that can give us that also.